After a disappointing ride in an electric car in Boston, machinist and bicycle mechanic George Foss came home to Sherbrooke, Quebec and decided to build a better motor car. So over the course of the 1896-97 winter, he built an automobile and decided that a combustion engine was the way to do it. Uh, he did have some help, so the help came from Scientific America, where he was able to get ideas on how um, combustion engines had been built previous to this, because he didn't invent the combustion engine, he simply built one. And in 1897, uh, he rolled the car out for the very first time and ran up and down the streets of Sherbrooke, which are fairly hilly if you know Sherbrooke, without any difficulty whatsoever. <laughs> and for four years, he drove, drove it around Sherbrooke and Montreal. However, the Fossmobile was not recognized as a triumph by everyone in Sherbrooke. He would tell us about, you know, how it scared the horses, they got stuck in the mud, that even some people were completely spooked by it because it made a lot of noise. Nobody had seen a car running around without a team of horses in front of it, right? George also received the first traffic infraction. Because, because the store owners would clear the sidewalks, the merchants would all clear the sidewalks, but the sleighs and the horse teams would be on the roads and the Fossilmobile couldn't drive on the road, so he drove on the sidewalks and the police gave him a ticket. <laughs> I wish I had a copy of that ticket today, <laughs> but uh, that's the way the story goes. In January 2019, his grandson Ron Foss decided to create a replica of the Fossmobile to help share the story with Canadians. Through the power of eBay, he began acquiring period parts. Ron wanted it to be authentic enough to be museum worthy. So we take the old photographs, we use re-engineering measurements from the old photographs, and once you have an original part or a period part that can give you some accurate measurements, you can, you can re-engineer from those photographs. After years of work, last night the replica of the Fossmobile was unveiled by George's great-great-granddaughters at Haggerty Garage and Social Club in Burlington. Jason Humphreys was the dedicated mechanic behind the build. The, the way they engineered everything, the way the clutches worked and everything, um, it was pretty ingenious for, for the time and for the, what they had to deal with. Um, you know, we have all the modern tools and everything. They, they didn't have, you know, the CNC's or anything like that, uh, all these machines to make this stuff. So a lot of the stuff was hand forged. You, you look at how you have to drive this car, it has a tiller, um, like you would kind of on a, on a little boat. Um, and you have to control the throttle and the timing and the clutch all in one assembly as you're trying to drive. And the, the tiller only moves uh, like two or three inches to go from steering lock to steering lock. So you figure trying to drive that back in the day where they didn't even have roads, you're driving it down goat, goat pass and stuff. It would, uh, it would be a lot of fun to drive. The Fossmobile is already scheduled to make numerous exhibits, including an appearance in the Burlington Car Show. It will then be on display at the Canadian Automotive Museum in Oshawa. This is really exciting for the museum. Uh, this is really the first uh, Canadian-built uh, gasoline-powered car uh, in history, and so to, you know, it really starts our story at the museum. So when we you talk about the earliest Canadian cars, we can start with literally the earliest Canadian car in our displays now. Helping to spread the story, the Fossmobile can now be found in the Canadian Encyclopedia. Ron is often asked if his grandfather had any regrets about not going into mass production. You know, because of it scaring children and, and petrifying you know, people in the streets and getting stuck and sometimes the chain would flip off the sprocket and problems like that, he just didn't see that people at that early on were actually going to buy into it. So to invest time and labor and, and expense into building it for something that people may not want was a risk he wasn't prepared to take. Um, the second part of it is, you know, he was, he was offered financing and an opportunity from Ford to build cars jointly. And he just didn't want to be part of a bigger organization. He preferred to work for himself. He preferred, as I said, sort of the more simplified aspects of life. And, you know, even when he was older, he said he never had any regrets. That he wouldn't live to being 92 with the stresses of being part of a big organization. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.